Welcome to Year of Connection, a year-long journey toward becoming whole self-connected. I'm your host, Pauline Shu. This week, we are going to talk about complaining. Far from advocating for a, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all approach, we are going to talk about what constitutes complaining, when complaining is actually helpful, and when it's not. We're also going to discuss how one should go about complaining. We all experience things in life that we don't like, whether it be a purchase, a person, an obligation, or anything else. We are bound to be upset or annoyed by many things over the course of our lifetime. When we're young, those annoyances tend to be, but by no means are always, proportionately small. As we grow older, those problems usually become correspondingly larger. With more experience, sometimes that means we don't perceive annoyances as readily as when we were more immature, and we therefore complain with what I would say is a richer perspective. And I make mention of this because perspective plays a big role in today's episode. But before we talk about perspective and its influence on the what's, how's, and why's of complaining, let's back up for a second and talk about how complaining and connection are related. There are two ways that we're going to define today. The first is that complaining can sometimes help you to find people who think the same way you do. When we talked last week about joining something, we discussed focusing on becoming a part of a group whose purpose and activities are centered on something you love. On the flip side, groups can often come together because people are passionate about something they dislike and they join forces to change that policy, action, or occurrence. Often, the way they find this common ground is through complaining. This is the first way in which complaining relates to connection and should give you an indication of how we here at Year of Connection perceive complaining. In this philosophy, it's not whining as long as, well, as long as it's not whining, meaning that complaining is not necessarily negative. It's simply an action that is an ingrained part of human nature, but becomes whining when we lose perspective. And I'll get to that in a moment after I share the second way in which complaining and connection are related. When complaining becomes detached from action, offered without complementary or corresponding solutions, when a person's complaining becomes so commonplace that their commentary, whether through complaint or compliment, loses its validity, or when there's simply too much complaining, meaning it takes over a relationship such that without complaints, the relationship no longer has purpose or definition, then complaining becomes exhausting for everyone involved and more than likely will lead to the loosening or complete dissolution of even some of the strongest connections. Because not only is this kind of complaining exhausting for everyone involved, it can so easily morph into contempt on both sides of connection. And quite sadly, I've rarely seen a case where a relationship recovers from feelings of contempt held by either or both parties toward the other. So how do we avoid situations like this? And how do we make sure that our complaints are valuable ones that add something to our lives and or the lives of those around us? This is where perspective becomes so important. Many of us live in a fairly stable society with enough food, warm shelter, and no immediate threats to our physical safety. And that's a wonderful thing. It's something humankind has worked toward across time and continues to strive for throughout the world even still. Many of us, again, not all of us, but many of us, rarely have to face tragedy or disaster, and some of us never do. But therein lies a problem when it comes to perspective. Without any threats to our physical security, we sometimes create chaos and emergencies in our minds out of small things to fill the void left behind by the eradication of true threats. And when we perceive or create the perception of disaster out of something that in actuality has very little, if any, true negative impact on our livelihood, it can lead to a situation where there is too much complaining to the point where it takes over a relationship. Without perspective, without understanding that some tragedies are not actually such at all, 
The pitfall is created by our own lack of comparison to life or livelihood threatening problems. To be clear, I am not condoning going around and handing out devastating events to others or inflicting them upon ourselves. Not at all, in no way, not even a consideration. We don't need something bad to happen to us to be able to get perspective. We simply have to be aware of the possibility that the lives we live might be only a minuscule portion of the much bigger pool of experiences in the wider world, and to keep our minds open to that possibility as we explore what our perspective might look like in such an expanded scope. It isn't only about the magnitude of complaints either, it can also be the frequency. When we complain too frequently, it can easily turn into a situation, much like in the fable of The Boy Who Cried Wolf. You're probably familiar with that story, but for those who might not be, the gist is this. A young boy living many years ago in a village decides to play a prank on the villagers by raising the alarm that a wolf is attacking. The villagers all come running to save him and their livestock, only to find that there is no wolf. The boy was making it up. It happens a second time, and once again, everyone drops what they're doing to fend off this beast. But once again, it's simply an inconsiderate ruse perpetrated by the boy. Then one day, a real wolf does come prowling around. But this time, when the boy shouts and screams for help, no one comes. Everyone thinks he's once again raising a false alarm, and he has sealed his own fate. Likewise, too much complaining leads to the scenario I described earlier, where those who hear the constant complaints eventually become inured to anything the complainer says, even if what that person has to offer might be important or useful. And in those cases, everyone loses out. Now let's talk a little again about whining. For me, when we complain repeatedly and don't take steps to fix the problems that cause us to complain, this is when I consider it to become whining. If you have kids, whether young or old, you probably know to some degree what it's like to listen to a lot of whining. It's not something that we desire to have in our lives, whether we're on the receiving end or the giving end. Now, all of these complaining behaviors can seriously damage connections, that doesn't mean you have to be a Pollyanna, someone who is never anything but cheerful and optimistic. After all, two episodes ago, I did say jealous feelings were perfectly natural. But it does mean that it is important to measure your complaints and ensure that they are balanced by action, by solutions, by positivity, gratitude, and compliments. I know a couple of people who embody this balance exceptionally well. One of them I met through my child's relationship to her, and we've become friends over time. I find this woman's company absolutely refreshing and delightful because she has such great perspective. That doesn't mean she never complains, but because she knows such a variety of people, has lived in different places, reads widely, and has unfortunately experienced her fair share of challenging circumstances in life, when she does complain, I listen. I take her complaints and her compliments very seriously. And because her words have weight, so many people are willing to band together in support of the solutions she and others offer to her complaints. It is through those types of connections, based on a great deal of respect, shared core values and standards of behavior, that her life and the lives of those who love her are often transformed for the better. It isn't because she doesn't complain at all. Complaints are a part of living. Being annoyed or angry is part of being human. But it is complaint with perspective that can make a big difference between disconnected whining and making connected, connecting change. If you'd like to share your thoughts or comments about complaining, please feel free to leave a comment on my blog at yearofconnection.com. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week. In the meantime, I wish you safe travels. Bye.